We're filming today at the Hamilton College Jazz Archive, and it's a great pleasure for me to have a second chance to talk to tenor saxophonist and band leader Houston Person. Hi. Hi. Welcome again. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Making a, a, a fortunate for Utica jazz lovers uh, that you're appearing in Utica. We don't mm. get men of your stature that often up here, and so it's a, be looking forward to tomorrow night. Oh, I'm looking forward to it, too. Uh, I've never been to Utica. Uh, so it's well, it had its day mm. as, a, as a jazz uh, center for a while. We, we do our best up here, but you're a guy who's had 75 albums at last count. Something like Soon that. Soon to be 76, you said. Tell me about your yeah. recent thing that's coming out. Uh, this is an album of standards, uh, mostly ballads, and uh, on it I'm stressing the melody, how strong the melodies are, with less, uh, not too much emphasis on improvisation, mm -hmm. but the improvisation is subtle. But I'm just stressing the melody of the strong, strongest of songs from the Great American Songbook. Probably oh, most of them you would consider, people would say they've been overdone, but I wanted to do the set of songs to really stress the melodic uh, mm -hmm. content and melody. When you say that, reminds me of something off this album that I'll play a bit of when you did As Time Goes By, mm -hmm. that you treat that melody with, with so much care. Oh yeah, I, I, I love the melody. Yeah. yeah. When you do that on this particular album, does it make for shorter cuts? Doing the, those that's one thing about this is that I went back to the concept of doing it as if they were 78s. Oh. So we went from anywhere from four to five minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a track of uh, Laura that is a little extended, but uh, the rest of it in that time range. I've been, I've been trying to stress melody, keep simple, and uh, not be too long. Do you find that something that you feel that the jazz audience needs these days to have a musician keep the songs uh, perhaps a little shorter so that you don't alienate anybody? Well, not, well, not necessarily. Uh, I think that uh, there are... Uh, um, if you don't have anything to say for so long um, and trying to get it together on the stage, I don't go for that. You should know what you're going to say when you get up there and get it over with. Mm -hmm. So if you go back and listen to those 78s that Charlie Parker and Dizzy and Miles did, you'll see that their solos were short. And they did it all. I mean, it was they, those things are amazing. And you try to play some of those solos, transcribe them, and you can't. <laughs> so, and they were the one. They were the ones that were qualified to take long solos, and they didn't. That's a great point. Um, and it's interesting the, how the technology has allowed other things to happen, but perhaps not all that positive. I mean, we have to do a CD now. You're expected to do almost an hour of music. Yeah. Well, well, you know the way I feel is, you know, with technology, you know, things don't necessarily get better. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, because um, a lot of people rely on it too much, mm -hmm. and uh, computers still break down. <laughs> you know, and now you got people who can't add without a calculator. So. Uh, um, I don't rely on technology. I mean, I still like to add. My brother and I, we, he always, when we check the ledger books um, for our little business in South Carolina, I still add, you uh -huh. know, and subtract manually. Trust, trust <laughs> yourself more than the... Yeah, but I, I enjoy it. Yeah. I enjoy the thrill of doing those things. But so with music, a lot of people now use music I, well, it's, it's really worked against a lot of musicians, starting with the LP, because of it, instead of adding more tunes, they just stretch the ones they're already playing. Hmm. So, 
I'm trying to add more, more melodies, more tunes, and still edit and keep the songs uh, at a reasonable length. Mm -hmm. Now, if you get something going and you got it going, then say it, you know. But uh, I like that 78, that 78 feel, uh -huh. where you get in there and get out. Who did you buy when you were young that you were listening to, and were they on 78s at that time? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, Dinah Washington, Buddy Johnson. Uh, uh, Stan Kenton, I was in the South. Yeah, Stan Kenton, Dizzy Gillespie. Yeah, just about everybody, Lester Young. They were all on 78s. Mm -hmm. And then they, you know, then the LP came. Who in particular on tenor did you feel that uh, you might have been influenced by? Mm, well, I liked everybody, really, starting with Illinois Jacket. And it's funny, when you're out of New York, you get a better feel of what really. See, being in the South, I got all those different influences, gospel, blues, and all that. So I liked the. Uh, Tom Archie, you know, the guy who worked with the um, Wynonie Harris, oh. blues singer, and then there was Johnny Griffin with with, with uh, uh, Hot Lips, and other guys playing that R&B thing, Willis Jackson. So then, I, and then I, you know, I like Hank Mobley, just everybody, I liked everybody. But now my initial influence, I would say, would have to be uh, probably Illinois Jacket. But uh, I like Lester Young, Gene Ammons, and I like Stan Getz, and I like uh, Warren Marsh. I like Warren Marsh a lot, and I liked uh, another saxophone player from uh, used to be from Newark. I never knew what happened to him, Joe Holiday. And another one of my big influences was Percy France. He used to play with Bill Dog and the organ groups. So there's all kind of influences out there. People seem to associate you a lot with, with organ groups, but that's only part of what yeah. you did. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like organ groups. Yeah. yeah, I like piano groups. I like anything that swing and it's bluesy. Okay. It's early in the interview, but I'm going to ask you a hard question. You said you like anything that swings. Yeah. Can you define that? No. Okay. <laughs> That's a short answer. Yeah. No, it's a swing. Well, to me, is swing is, is is it contributes to an element in jazz that's been left out now. And that's why we have problems, is the element of dance. And it makes the body move and make your feet move and make you respond. Uh, that's what swing is. I guess the lilt in your body as you go, as you shake your head or whatever you do, but there's a certain swing and an element uh, that makes the body want to move. And now when you go to head jazz, you've got to sit still mm -hmm. and you can't dance. You can't have fun. Yeah, somebody across yeah. from me is telling you to shh, shh, yeah. you know? Yeah, it's, uh, it's really, well, it's weird. Well, if tomorrow night, let's say you're in, you're in this jazz club in Utica, how would you feel if people started to get up and danced? I'd be happy. Would you? Yeah. To me, that's a part of it. Mm -hmm. That makes it complete. That's why when you're playing in the jazz club and people are leaving like, 11 or 12, I said, well, where are you going? You know, oh, we're going somewhere we can dance. <laughs> so, now, years ago, it wasn't that way. Mm -hmm. You know, you dance. Do you think that it's because we have elevated jazz to uh, almost a highbrow art form? Yeah. That's become an elitist sort of become elite. As for a lot of people who don't don't really understand it, you know, it's passing, 
fad, a diversion. Mm -hmm. But um, it's uh, well, it's like what classical music became, and then classical music had problems, which just came the same way. Mm -hmm. You know, even you know back in the you know Ludwig in Bavaria. He would have a composer write a tune and just have his friends come to hear. They'd sit there, you know, you know two thousand seat thing with about twenty people and just the cronies and listen to it. <laughs> the people couldn't hear it. Hmm. You know, I don't mean to call names, but this is what royalty did. You yeah. know, they would give chamber music. Yeah, and I guess that's where the chamber the term came from. Small venue. Yeah, very small. <laughs> you know. Um, but but um and then that became sort of for the elitist. But the people will always find an alternate music. If they're not getting what they want, they're gonna That's go somewhere right. else. Yeah, so when they couldn't dance they became rock. Rock and roll and, and then they started dancing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cause the the you can't kill a human spirit. They'll find a way. The same way they cut music out of the schools and bond issues and people wouldn't vote to train kids. Then you then you had people just find a little turntable and they start scratching and making their own rhythm and then you got rap. Mm. So the people will always find a way. And then you wonder why so many people like it, because they haven't been exposed to anything else. You know, you keep it in the parlors, mm. you know. Mm. And it's almost a parlor music some places. Do you think institutions like Lincoln Center Jazz um, are good or bad for the music overall? Well, nothing is bad. Yeah. I mean, nothing is bad. I mean, even if you creating music for 20 or 30 people off of a private uh, soiree. Nothing, nothing's bad. Um, i just like to see music, more music in the schools. That's, that's where it all starts. Mm -hmm. Like we used to have the music appreciation courses, and you know, where you just got a little whiff of music. You didn't have to be a virtuoso. Just know that there are alternatives. And uh, that's what we had. We had music appreciation classes in, you know, early school. And uh, then if you wanted to be in the band, they had an instrument for you. No matter how broken it was, they had one for you. And there are a lot of schools that do that, but it's, it's not enough. It doesn't, doesn't reach the, uh, especially in the inner cities, it's really bad, but they just, now, nah, even they're trying to cut out athletic programs, so um, you really stymie children's creative ability when they don't have any artistic things. Yeah. So, um, but still, I don't know how the parents let, let the administrations get away with it when they pay the taxes. I know education is a big issue for you, it's central to, yeah. uh, to your philosophy and do you get involved with, uh, your, your son is, is uh, away at college now, is that right? Yeah, my stepson, yeah. yeah. And um, does he uh, seem to f be finding his way in, in his college life? Are you happy with, with what he's doing? Yeah, yeah. Um, but he's not, uh, he likes music. Uh, I don't know what, I think eventually he would wind up in some of that. And I have a daughter who's a, wants to be a promoter <laughs> so <laughs> she can start with you right <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so they, you know so they uh, they um they 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 they're sort of interested mm -hmm. but um they're going their own way which is fine with me but um Back to Lincoln Center, and uh, I think they're doing a wonderful job there, you know, and especially with the kids' programs, you know, and they do as much as they can, and um, 
they've got a forceful guy down there, Winton. He keeps, he's going to fight. And John Fattis, I like what he's doing too. Mm -hmm. So the two guys who are really making big contributions. Um, and they have people who they're responsible to. But they do their bit, they do their, you know, what, what they can, and they do some wonderful things too. They really expose a lot of the, really getting to more of a concert type thing, which it can be. Now that's, that's not what I was talking about earlier, because Winton wrote a ballet too, so he's into dance too, you know. So, you know, dance is a very big part of this music. I think I saw a thing in the New York Times recently that, that they had done a concert with a dance venue. People were doing, mm -hmm. the, you know, the swing dance out on the Oh, Lincoln floor. Center. Oh, man, it's great. It's great. I went down here with our jackets band, and that's great. Now, I was looking at thousands of people dance. I mean, and, and I was saying to myself, we were talking, I was talking to Bob Porter, and I say, this is all, this is it's so simple to really bring jazz back into the mainstream of things. Just let the people dance, let the people participate. Because usually what you wind up with is people looking at somebody indulge themselves and they can't indulge. This is like, a lot of people have this feeling, you know, you're on the outside looking in, you know. Yeah. And here's this guy just playing and, and you're just looking. Now, if you feel like dancing or whatever or clapping, or even what, you can't, you know. So uh, I can understand people when they, you know, say, well, you know, I'm going over here <laughs> where I can have some fun, you know. Because that's where it came from, mm -hmm. you know. Well, when you mentioned Illinois, that he was uh, kind of a bridge almost between into rhythm and blues. Yeah. And, and really a lot of theatrics. Oh, yeah. Did, did people, did fellow musicians look askance at that kind of, um, kind of showboating thing? Well, I don't, I don't think so. It was just, to me, it was having fun with the music. Because these guys were some of the greatest guys, musicians in the world we're talking about. Dizzy Gillespie, who was an entertainer. The greatest jazz musicians of all, Louis Armstrong, was an entertainer. Lionel Hampton was an entertainer. See, that element got lost somewhere. Uh, Miles Davis, in his own way, was an entertainer. Mm -hmm. um, all these guys, Mingus, you know, I, you look back, you trace all the great guys, they were entertainers. Illinois Jacket, you know, with the jazz at the Philharmonic. Uh, Count Basie's band. Um, Duke Ellington. Talk about a showman, huh? Well, yeah, with them, oh man, suave, elegant, and a showman. Even that was a part of the show. Uh-huh. You know. So, um, and these guys were top musicians. I mean, the best. But they never lost sight of that audience. Mm -hmm. You know, they brought something. And there was no dignity loss, because who could have more dignity than Duke Ellington? <laughs> you know, so, so I, um, no musicians. You know, you, you're always going to have some some people that are more serious, and that's good too. I mean, there's a place for jazz is so big. And so wide the range of feelings, you can have everything. Just know what's what, mm -hmm. you know. And um, and there are times when there are concert situations, and there should be times there are dance situations. 
and I don't mean swing dance, and I mean with the ballet or, or Alvin Ailey, they do a lot of things with jazz. You know, so there's, you well, know, you go to hear any, any, any opera, or, there's always a ballet in it, you know, so these other genres don't discard the dance. Mm -hmm. you know. I'll quote your last interview. You said, everything in balance. Yeah, yeah. that's right. right. <laughs> that's right. And jazz is one of the musics that can do that. Uh -huh. you know, there's, there's a place for everything. Oh. And, uh, you know, we just need to do more with the dance. And, and, and Lincoln Center does a great job with that in the summer. They mm -hmm. teach people before the music starts. Mm -hmm. You can go down and get lessons. Cool. So they've done a great thing. And then there are a lot of big bands creeping back into the scene. That seems to be, I, I keep seeing these little articles in the paper, Swing is Coming Back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, oh, I heard Bob Mintz's band uh, this summer. It was great. Yeah. So guys are out there, you know. Well, in your career as a recording musicians, we, we mentioned your, you've recorded some 70, some albums. Does the economics, has it changed a lot over the years, um, trying to get records out, keeping track of, of how they're doing? Does, has your relationship with record companies changed? Uh, I don't know. I have a good, good relationship with my record company. I've been there for ages. Um, but I've been big and small. And I, I like small. Uh, the economics are different. Um, but I still like small. Because mm -hmm. I can keep up with what's going on. I have control of my own production. And um, if I need something somewhere, they get it there immediately. So I can keep a hands on what's going on. To, to get specific, does, do they give you X amount of dollars to work with when you make a recording? And then it's, then it's up to you to like keep within a budget? Yeah, some companies do. But uh, mine is so loosely, I have such a loose relationship yeah. there. Um, we go over what we're going to do. And um, I've been doing it so long, I know, you know, how to do it and do it cost-wise, I hope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I must be, because I wouldn't be there. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be looking elsewhere. Yeah. How long do you usually get to record a, a CD these days? Uh, I, usually, I usually go right in and do them. Yeah, one day, two days. Uh -huh. I don't fool around with them. Go in and get it over with. You have to have a supporting cast who can. Oh, I know all my supporting it. cast. Yeah, yeah they, that's why I can do it. Uh huh. You know, because in New York, you know, you got the best. So, I always get the best, and I work with the best. So, that that's it for me. All right. <laughs> I wanted to play a little cut off um, one of your fairly recent numbers and ask you just a little bit about this. Space like there. Yeah. <laughs> That's some great stuff. Can you re uh, relate? how this tune or most tunes come to you. How do you write? I don't know. Come on, you can tell me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, is it divine inspiration? 
I, I well, yeah, cause I I usually like to play other people's mm -hmm. music, and this one it just came to me and it fit, and there was a bridge I put in there. Yeah, and I couldn't. I said, oh, you never play your own stuff, and I said, why not? Yeah, <laughs> so that's where the title came. From. I mean, some people have told me that they they would put on a tune, even if it was a simple little blues head, because they would get some writer's royalties out of it. Right. But that doesn't seem to be your motivation. No. Yeah. No, I used to do other people's yeah. music. Yeah, I like that. And I used to try to give these songs to other guys, but uh, I'm glad I did this one. Yeah. It won some awards and everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I was happy about that. Do you sit at the piano and, and work? No. 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 None of those things. <laughs> well, there has to be a method for. You play ba da da. Now, where's the chord come from? You work with somebody else, or no, you thinking, just hear the whole thing? Yeah, I'm thinking yeah. minor. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And what I really conceive would be a minor blues with a bridge. Yeah. So that's that's the way I got it, and the bridge turned out to be pretty and melodic. So. Yeah. I and, like it. and as we discussed before the cameras were rolling, it would lend itself to a big band arrangement. Yeah. 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 So. Uh, a group in England recorded this, and they recorded it with four horns. Uh huh. Yeah. Came out real good. Yeah. Yeah. But I'd like to hear it with a big band. Yeah. yeah. I like the uh, the unison with the horns, and I myself, I'm always tempted like harmonize everything, you know. But yeah. I, I, the same lesson can be learned from, from Cannonball Adderley's group, yeah. which was one of my favorites. That, that yeah. Most of the time, just the, but the way it was played yeah. was so tight. I like the unison, yeah. yeah. yeah it's stronger. Yeah. Yeah, I, I either have to tell guys, you know, lay off those thirds, man. <laughs> just play it, you know. But sometimes you're he, he tempted, you know, because, yeah, you know, you're a musician and you want to, Show everything, so you're tempted to do it. Sometimes I do it. Yeah. And I know I shouldn't, but I do it. <laughs> it's funny how you know what not to do, and you go ahead and do it anyway. <laughs> you know, so. And then you feel like an idiot. Why did I do it? <laughs> That's the hardest lesson to learn, though. Yeah. What not to do. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's a hard thing to teach students, for instance. Yeah. What not to play. Oh, yeah. And how to keep it simple. Yeah. That's really hard. Yeah. That's hard to old musicians. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, boy. Um, what's the New York City scene like for, for musicians uh, like yourself these days? Is it, is it worth making the effort to try to play in the city? Well, I don't think city. I think, you know, universal, you know. You got to figure out where you want to make your home. Now, I advise all young musicians or any musicians, they have to come to New York at mm -hmm. least for a while. Because that's where the best is. And then you can go wherever you want to live. You know, a lot of guys live a lot of different places, but they have been to New York and played with the best and got the experience. and hard knocks, and then uh, then settle down and make a living. And and you can, but you can make a living in the city playing music. Mm -hmm. um, I always say it's, I always tell guys, you know, and an old musician told me once, you know, because somebody always gives you advice, you know, he said, um, Get a dark suit, white shirt, uh, dark tie, um, be on time, learn the blues, start us in body and soul, and you'll work. <laughs> and I did that. <laughs> and I worked. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, basically, music is so many fingers on it, so many uh, ways you can make a living mm -hmm. in it. Um, 
But it's good to come to New York when you're young and, and before you get a family and decide what you want to do, yeah. you know. Uh, and there's so, so many ways. I, I love music because there is, I don't think it's too many fields where you can be so many different things. I mean, a promoter, producer, engineer, you know, so many different things. After you got out of the service, did you ever um, work non-musical jobs? No. You've been able to pretty Never much yep. do it in music. Mm -hmm. That's saying something. Yeah. Yep, that's all I've done. Mm -hmm. And you started uh, almost from the beginning having yeah. your own band. Yeah, I didn't work with any groups, you know, except went with one Johnny Hammond Smith for about uh -huh. two years. And that was it. I so I didn't have any uh there was nothing visual. I hadn't had any nobody knew who knew who I was. And uh I just stuck it out. But if you get a wife, four girls to feed and a mortgage <laughs> You find a way. <laughs> That's what happened. Uh -huh. <laughs> the motivation was definitely was, there. See, I had to keep myself at it. I said, now, I want to play music. You know, how do, I've got to make this work. I've got to. So <laughs> I wow. got out and hustled. Yeah. Hustling meant going to different clubs and getting your band booked in there. And yeah. I mean, what kind of money would you have been making with your band, if you don't mind me getting personal, like in the early years? Ooh, scary. Yeah. No money. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, when I first started, I realized that. I, I, you know, I know the economics of jazz, so I gave people offers they couldn't refuse to get in the door. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and just kept building and building and building. And... Um, I was with Prestige Records, and they were good to me. They stuck with me for a while and let me get my feet out there. And um, I had a lot of help on the way. A lot of people helped me. So that was really. Mm -hmm. And there are some good people in jazz. You know, some cutthroats, but hey, it's all fair. It balances out. It balances out. <laughs> <laughs> But even the cutthroats are nice, you know. I mean, you know, so I... Yeah. yeah you got your jazz characters. They'll always be there, you know. Did it help um, to add the vocal element to your group from a, from oh, a working yeah. standpoint? Yeah, well, yeah. I wanted to have a band with a singer. That was my dream. Because mm -hmm. when I used to see the bands come to the South, the bands would always have a singer. So it helped a lot. And, you know, having somebody with the stature of Etta wanting to be in the bad was great. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So uh, it worked out fine. Yeah, it's been a great help. So mm -hmm. it gives a more balanced yeah. uh, presentation. You know. So that's really helped. I hope to bring the group up here someday. To Hamilton. Sounds like a good idea. Yeah. That's your department. <laughs> <laughs> He said it on camera, so. I'm hustling the gig on camera. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I hope to play with your band someday. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> You've probably had to relearn some standards in, in different keys uh, for, for, for her voice. No, not really. No? I'm kidding. No, it's... Uh, well, I know I'm in all the keys yeah. anyway. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. But, um, no, we just, well, we've been together 30 years, so, you know, it's... it's this has been worked out long ago, right? Yeah, we yeah. just trial and error over the years, so we just go and do it. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that's the way it works. <laughs> well, the last time I saw you guys was a pretty nice situation on that cruise ship. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting, the... Some venues have shrunk for jazz. Others have opened up. Yeah. You know, I, I guess that's a probably a pretty good gig 
to get those kinds of things. Yeah, because we'll be going on to Norway in October. We've been going on that for the last five or six years, and that's been great. Pretty educated audience, too. Oh, well, the audience is there just for that. Yeah. So, you know, if you're going to spend your, your cruise money, you're there for, you're going to get your money's worth. Yeah. No, but it's, it's, it's a great cruise, too, because they have Meet the Artist Theories, autograph sessions, record sales sessions, uh, and uh, jam sessions, the whole thing. So it's great. Mm -hmm. You get to bring your own band. You get to bring your own band. That's very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you'll see it all. Everybody is doing their thing the way they do it. And then you catch a lot of jam sessions. Now, I know musicians around here. Uh, including myself, have a, in our book we have a list, you know, if a gig comes up and you say, now who can I get on drums, and you, and you go down, make your first choice, is it, is it the same for you? Do you have a, a circle of people that you, that you call on, or do you have the same people all the time? Well, in a recording studio, I have a circle of people, because you have to give the artist consideration to or the artist that you're producing, but uh, I have a regular band. Same guys. Mm. Piano players have been with me about 10 years, 10, yeah. 12 years. So, no, these same guys. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. There's a lot to be said for having uh, some arrangements worked out, yeah. you know, and having, having a sound. Yeah. Yeah, we've got a sound. Yeah. All about trial and error. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I like to wing it. We wing it. Do you write out a set before you go up on stage, or no. you just you just call you like read the audience? Yeah. 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 I couldn't follow it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, it just it just rolls out whatever it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you see a good future for for this music in general? In for jazz. It it's. I see, I see so much publicity about it, but I don't see it um, transferred to live venues. Well, I, well, I see a future. I really do. Because I think there's going to be, uh, I should say evolution, but a revolution. Uh, you see part of it now when the kids start the swing dancing thing, suddenly you're pushing bands back. You know, even if, you know, you listen to Glenn Miller and ben, Benny Goodman and all those people, Count Basie, Duke Ellen, you listen to those records again. Kids are starting to listen to that in that swing dance situation. So then you'll have groups, college groups, having swing bands. And then it'll evolve, it'll go all the way around full circle again. And, um, yeah, I see a future. Um, because I think that, as I say before, the dance will come back as we see it is. Mm -hmm. And they should take a cue from Lincoln, uh, a cue from Lincoln Center and the response that they had with it. So people can get involved, as you yeah. said. Yeah. Yeah, we gotta get, keep people back in, into it. That's what you gotta do. I wanna see if I can find uh, this particular tune that I just love the beginning of. That has Houston person sound <laughs> down. Let me see if I've got it. I don't got it. There it is. A Houston person sound. Yeah. Oh. Let me hear this so I can learn it. <laughs> Thank you. 
that is romantic as I'll get out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I get a lot of calls about that song. Yeah? Yeah. Gee. Now, you did something at the end of this tune, too. Do you recall um, the last A? No. No, you don't? <laughs> I'm trying to. Let me see if I can find it. I have to. I ho hope I don't make a, a liar out of myself, but. Yeah, this. <laughs> uh, must have been right at the end. You did this this very cool modulation right oh, at the yeah? end of the tune. Yeah. Oh, you're gonna have to listen to yourself now because it was neat. Oh. Believe me. Oh. Well, Trust okay, me. I okay. will. You took the last A and you went like I don't know. I some will of the key. Yeah. It was nice. Real nice. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Gee. Yeah, I've got to listen to me. Well, is there anything else that you'd like to ask me before we wrap up here? Yeah, give me a gig. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Am I coming back in April? That's what I want to That's know. That's what you want to know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow night on the stage. And um, if I get up and start dancing, I hope that... Uh, I'm going to play something slow and pretty for you. All right. And you can dance. All right. Do you have a dance floor in there? You know, it's funny, I, I don't dance much. Usually I'm on the, the playing end of things, but I do like to move to the music. Yeah. Well, I don't dance. Yeah. I never learned. I'm a little shy, too, I guess. Yeah, I know, I can tell. Yeah, man, getting on the, out on the floor, man. <laughs> but I love to see people dance. Yeah. Yeah. It, that really gets to me. Well, the stories are, uh, many stories about how fellows like Basie and everything learned from the dancers what tempos yeah, worked. Yeah, yeah, you do. They'll give it to you. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Well, it's been a pleasure again talking with you. Well, I'm the same here. Mm -hmm. uh, it's always a pleasure being here in academia, the halls of <laughs> academia. I'm really having a ball. I really enjoyed it up here, though. Good. Yes. Glad like, to have you. Let's see how uh, young people develop, and they're in good hands. All right. Appreciate that, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow night. I hope so. Okay. Get me a get me a ticket on the Norway, if you would. Is that on camera? That's on camera. <laughs> okay. See you soon. Hey, thank you. Okay. Thank you.